Hey y'all, it's Hope at Crafty Hope and welcome to another one of my assemblage art pieces. This one I'm calling Bubble Boy because of this picture. Um, it's a little boy probably in the 50s or 60s blowing some bubbles in his front yard and there's bubbles all over him and I don't know. He just caught my attention when I was flipping through some of my vintage photos. So I um, you saw there, I've got this cradle board and I'm using the back side of it. So it's a little bit of a shadow box, but very shallow. I think I bought a set of three of those from Walmart. Yeah, it was like over in the arts and crafts section. So I want to thicken up my vintage photo of my little bubble boy with uh, because he's just so flimsy so I'm using the back of a like a little notepad you know how it's got like the cardboard on the back I'm just gonna take some tacky glue smear it on the back of my photo and stick my bubble boy right on to that cardboard so I'm trying to keep my glue off of there you see and so I'm gonna go ahead and spread that with um I could have used a credit card but I've got this I think it's a cake icing spreader from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Y'all, I am all over the place. That is how I work. Um, I use what you have and yeah, make it work. All right, so I am getting him glued down a little bit. Again, trying to smear that out. I did have this slowed down a little so you could see and I think I'm going to put him off to the side and let him dry for a little bit. Oh wait, now I'm going to cut him down just a little bit while I put them off to the side, just so that big piece of cardboard isn't so cumbersome. All right, so I have all kinds of little things. They are in general kind of play and kid and toy related. So I've got like puzzle pieces. This is a, uh, a checkers piece. And um, the checkers piece did not want to stick, stick with that tacky glue. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the black E6000. I am only using the black beak here because it's what I have. And I knew I was going to paint this black. I'm not a huge fan of the black. It, it's a little gloopier and stringier than the regular clear E6000. So I will say that I accidentally bought it. So I'm using it. Like I said, use what you've got. <laughs> All right, so for the puzzle pieces and some of these other more lightweight things, I'm going to go ahead and use that tacky glue since I dumped out all of that big pile of tacky glue. Uh, there you can see I'm looking at the puzzle pieces because I was realizing they were all the same shape. Um, I was a little frustrated <laughs> with that. It's just a cheap puzzle set that I happen to have. Um, and I'm using, I'm gluing it with the image side down. Um so the paint will absorb better and it won't be so shiny. So anyway, I got a bunch of stuff glued in there. Things like that key and anything that was too heavy. I did use the E6000, but for the most part, I used um, all that tacky glue. And now I've got some, I'm trying to see what those are. Those are just like little rhinestone pieces that will add a little bit of extra texture. And I'm just using them to fill in some of the blank areas. I kind of know where my bubble boy is going to go. So I didn't really worry about those sections too much. So my tacky glue is dry here and I'm going to cut down the cardboard, trying to steer clear of cutting any of that frame. That's the natural frame from the photograph that old photos had on it. So I get that cut down and I decide I need to fill in some of these spaces some more. So I grabbed, um, this is the 3D gloss gel from Prima Marketing. And I've got, they're a little stones. These are the Bria Reese, uh, I don't know. They're like mixed media stones. They're almost kind of like styrofoam. They're really lightweight, but they're good for adding texture. I know Finabear and Prima Marketing have their own version of these, but I don't have those. I found these on clearance at Hobby Lobby. So that's what I'm using. So I'm using that 3D gloss gel and I'm putting it in just different spots and then sticking some of these stones down. I'm going to use just a few of the bigger stones and then I use the smaller ones. So yeah, here are the smaller ones again putting that gloss gel down and then trying to just get some of those smaller stones in different places. Now this was not the most, I guess, efficient way to do this. I haven't quite found that yet because I've tried to use these stones in a couple different ways. 
since then um and really just trying to get some glue down and then stick down those stones um kind of works so there i'm shaking out some of those stones making sure everything's glued down i left that to gl dry for a while um do you all see that i stuck down some google eyes now of course since i'm going to paint over them You'll never see those Google eyes, but when you shake this piece, you can hear them moving around, and I kind of love that. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just a little thing I know. I'm going to grab a couple more of those rhinestones and just put them kind of in each of the corners, one in each corner, like um, for a little bit of texture on the frame, just so it looks kind of like rivets or nail heads or something like that on it. So... And then I'm going to come in with my black gesso. Now the black gesso I'm using is from Studio 7 One uh, or Studio 7 71. I got it years and years ago and I cannot find that brand anymore. So I'll have some black gesso linked below, but I think it'll just be the Primo Marketing one probably because that's the only other black gesso I've ever tried. So um yeah. So I've got this big brush and I'm trying to paint all of these little pieces, get in all the cracks and crevices, go all the way around. I don't think I leave this whole thing here. Yeah, I probably did several coats of this, <laughs> um, of that gesso just to cover everything really thoroughly. And now I've got some washi tape that I am using like a painter's tape to tape off the frame because I'm going to use some sprays in a second and I don't want to have to repaint that whole frame. It's really not a huge deal. I can, um, but I just went ahead and taped it off just for the sake of doing it. So y'all get to see that. And if you have painter's tape, you could totally use that. You don't have to use washi tape. It was just what was handy for me to get to. Masking tape would probably work well also. All right, so I've got that. And then I've got some Lindy's sprays. Oh, y'all, I cannot remember what sprays they are. But I've got a kind of a teal green, a pink, and a lime. So I will try to list those below if I can go find them. The teal one is going to be the hardest one for me because I have several teals where I don't have as many limes and pinks. All right, so I am just spraying a little bit of each of these in there. So there's a little bit of that teal. Um, am I going to dry it? I can't remember. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and dry that because I didn't want anything to get too muddied. So here I'm adding the pink. And my idea for this, and y'all, I'm a lot of stuff's gonna be added in this because my whole idea for the inside of this is to give that feeling of that like oil slick that you see on a bubble. Do you know what I'm talking about? That like rainbow effect that you get on a bubble, and that's kind of what I wanted to do to go with my little bubble boy. So I've got these three in there. All I've really got is shimmer and not a whole lot of color because, of course, I've got that black background. I could see some of the color in this, but not not as much as I really wanted. So I'm going to come in with this Arte Arteza paint in Pearl Arctic Blue. It's a mica paint, so it's got a little bit of shimmer in it, like, you know, like a bubble does. And I'm going to put some down on my, um, just on my table, because I cover my table with paper and then just use that as my palette. <laughs> and I'm going to brush off. I'm using a dry brush and I'm brushing off a lot of the color, just leaving a tiny bit. And I'm going to go around inside this whole box to accentuate all the texture of the the fun little things I added in there. The toys and puzzle pieces and beads and buttons and keys and stuff you would find in a little boy's pocket, I guess is probably the best way. And, you know, some little stones. And yeah, of course I say that, but y'all, I'm the world's worst about having stuff in my pockets too. I pick up things out of parking lots all the time. That's where some of this stuff has come from. So, all right, so I got the blue in there and I'm going to add some of the pink in that. And I think that's like pearl pink is what it is and I'm doing the same method I'm you know using a mostly dry brush and here you can see I'm not going over all the areas I'm really just trying to add little touches of pink in here again trying to get that bubble effect wanting 
wanting some shimmer. Um, I'm just giving y'all a peek at what I did because, yeah, this goes through a lot. <laughs> it goes through a lot because I knew, I knew I wanted to really bring out the idea of the bubble in this, but I was struggling with the best way to do it. So here's how I do it. All right, so I still wasn't too happy. It was too shimmery, too shiny, too pink and all of that. So I've got just some Payne's Gray acrylic paint, no shimmer, no nothing. And I'm going to go over a bunch of this with it to push back that shiny, shiny shimmer. Because it just, yeah, it was, the mica was great. The spray was great, but that's a lot of mica. That's a lot of sparkle. And I didn't want it anymore. So I'm going to push it back with the... Um, Payne's Gray. I could have used, I guess, more of the black, but I really wanted to continue to try to bring a little blue in there. All right, this is, oh, I can't remember. It's Dragonfly Glaze, um, which also has a little bit of a shimmer to it. Um, and I'm going, I've got a really fluffy brush there, and I'm going over all of that. Now, the instructions on this say to give, I think, a couple hours between coats to use many, many coats of it. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm putting it on there pretty wet. And I am i know I did one coat. I might have done two. But I didn't do a whole lot. This doesn't, again, doesn't add a whole lot to it. I'm still struggling. So I've got this turquoise satin. Um, um, what is it? Art Alchemy Wax. That I'm going to go over this. Again, it's got the blue in it. It's going to add some more shimmer. And... Y'all, I'm sorry you're having to watch this, but I was trying everything I could to to really get that bubble effect I want. And all those layers are there. You can see them in the end and in little bits and pieces because you can still see some of that sparkle that's in. I don't know, y'all. This is this assemblage project for me is a been all about experimenting and trying new things and seeing what happens. So I've I've put that aside to dry with the wax on it and I've pulled out some acrylic paint and I've got these little I don't even know what they're called they're from Tim Holtz I've bought at least two packs of them on clearance and I have got like a blue a pink and a yellow and maybe I don't know I'm gonna play with some acrylic not acrylic inks alcohol inks and some alcohol yep there's my little dropper of alcohol and I uh, you can see my uh, Q-tips there are already messed up because I've been playing with this for a while trying to figure out how to do it. If I don't like it, I can use the alcohol to just rinse off those alcohol inks. And I'm using the dirty Q-tips and just really getting colors and spots I want. Trying to make these little gems look like bubbles. Look like that little oil slick on there. So I'm showing y'all what I'm doing, but it's, you know, it's one of those things that, again, I really was just playing around, seeing if I could get them to be kind of cool. All right. Once again, I've got, that is some um, just white acrylic paint and then a pearlizing medium. And that you mix in a one-to-one -one or two-to-one ratio. I did about a one-to-one. -one. Mixing those things up, trying again to... I don't know, y'all. Like I said, this was a big old struggle bus for me. So I'm doing what I've been doing, which is using a pretty dry brush. And since that stuff is so wet, I think I went ahead and brought in the paper towel. But I wanted to, the texture of all of that was disappearing, even with everything I had put on there. So I decided to bring the white in. I've, I've done this on a couple other things that you'll probably see in the future. But do you see how some of those other, with that pearlizing medium and everything, that some of those colors have been brought back up? Yeah, that works great. And then I decided to bring everything together with some splatter. So I'm pretty using a pretty concentrated of that pearlizing medium with the um, uh, white acrylic paint. I just said it. Uh, and I'm just splattering that straight on to all of this. And with that, I really am very much feeling this piece a bit more. So I've got my E6000. This is just the white. And I'm gluing down not only three of those 
Tim Holtz little sparkle things, but I've also got some beads that have a, like an AB um, Aurora Borealis finish on them. They're plastic beads. And I'm just sticking those down along with my little Tim Holtz gems with the E6000 um, because they look like that all feels like bubbles to me in different sizes. And so it's kind of coming from my dude. I'm using stays on here just to go around the edges, trying to make sure that that, whatchamacallit, cardboard doesn't show. That's my big concern. The edges are coming off a little. They didn't get stuck down quite as well as I had hoped. And I, I don't really mind that, but I just don't want the cardboard to show. So I put that stays on in there and then decide to come in with a Faber-Castell pit pen and get kind of in between where the um, picture's popping off that cardboard just to make sure it doesn't show. And now here's the big reveal. I'm going to peel up my washi tape here and I will tell you the inside you can see little dabs of some of the paint and sprays and everything that are on the inside of the frame and I'm going to yeah at this point yeah I haven't stuck my little dude down yet so I'm going to go ahead I knew where the highest points were back there you can kind of see them some of the beads and things that are the high points and that's where I put my glue rather than sticking the glue all over the whole back of that picture and then I grab my black gesso and I'm going to touch up the inside of the frame where those you can see some of the white some of the splatter some of the sprays all of that and it just and also yeah yeah just some of the frame needed to be touched up a little bit I didn't want that to be a distraction from everything that's going on on the inside of this shadow box and no I think that's just about it for this uh, assemblage. I'm sorry it was such a wild ride. I encourage you to, to experiment with your materials and supplies and see what kind of different things you can come up with because I didn't know what was going to happen but I finally got there. Just keep on playing. Keep pushing at it. Push it back. Pull it forward. Whatever you've got to do. All right, if y'all have any questions for me, don't hesitate to ask. If you like this, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Come back another time and see what else I've got going on. All right, y'all. Bye.